shad tubes, minnow tubes, soft plastic grubs. Get serious about trout and landlocked king trolling with serious soft plastics from the Fish Hunt Shoot Production Store. Fighting like crazy. All right. That was really cool. Wow, he's heavy. Oh, there he goes. Oh, oh <laughs> Yeah, he was just hanging out under the surface. Well, he ain't no 18 pounds. He might be 18 inches. Yeah. <laughs> but he's a good one for a lake. Oh, yeah. What? Stay right there. Reel down a little bit more. Right there. Wow. Nice. Very cool. Very nice fish. Cool. Yeah. yeah. How do you like that, huh? That's a rainbow. That's exactly what that is. That's a big rainbow. Oh, waiting for you to say yeah. That. That's why he jumped. He yeah. so good. Rainbow. Wow. Yeah. That's my first Oroville rainbow. I've never caught one here. Very, very few. Look at it. Did he eat that thing down? Yeah, or he what? did. See how the spots are just small, just yeah. little dots? Howdy folks, Cal Kellogg here. Well, I am filming up on a hilltop today and we got a little, little low pressure area going through. It looks like it might actually rain, but bottom line is I got a little bit of swirling wind right now and uh, you may hear that on the microphone, but I think you can hear me just fine. Um, got another viewer question today and this is a special one. This came from Diane. She's one of our lady anglers out there that watches the channel. We don't have a whole bunch of lady anglers watching this content, so I really like to go out of my way to answer all their questions. So let's get started. Diane asked me, what kind of a setback do I use behind the boat when I'm using Dodgers? And uh, you know, it doesn't matter to me if I'm using Dodgers or I'm just running a naked lure. I use the same setback. Um, let me show you some Dodgers here. Here's a six inch fisheye Dodger. Here's a uh, six inch UV sling blade Dodger. And here's one of my mini Diamondback Dodgers. And I would use the same setback when using all of these. Um, and the rule of thumb for me, if I'm fishing out of a power boat, it's 100 feet back in general. Um, if I'm fishing out of my kayak, I can get away with, with fishing a lot closer to the kayak. Um, if the gear I'm using allows me to. Now, if I'm using lead core and I want to be three three colors back or 15 feet deep, well, that's going to be 90 feet plus the leader. There's no getting around that. That's how long the lead core is. But if I'm in a power boat and I'm top lining, I think 100 feet is a good rule of thumb. Now, last year, I was out on Stampede Reservoir with a guy named Mark Christoffel and if you want to go fishing up there, guys, anybody, fish the Truckee region, get some uh, kokanee up at Stampede. He is a, he's a top guy and a super pleasant guy. Um, he told me something I'd never heard before. What well, his deal is, is he always fishes in terms of setback in multiples of 100. I guess, I guess multiples would be the right term. Here's the concept. If he's top lining, puts his gear back 100 feet. If he's dropping down with the downrigger, say he drops down 20 feet, he goes back 80. 80 and 20 adds up to 100. Conversely, if he's going down 80 feet, his setback is only 20 feet. His theory is, is that he wants the lure about 100 feet from the boat. So the deeper he goes, the shorter his setback is, and the number on his mind is always 100 feet. If he's fishing 30 feet deep, he's putting the lure 70 feet back, 70 and 30, 100. You get the concept. And I thought that was that was kind of that was interesting, and uh, I will always recommend that to people. I thought that that was a pretty nifty idea. So, thumbs up, Mark. Anyway, moving on. The other factor about setback behind a Dodger, and this wasn't really Diane's question, but I, I think it's a good time to cover. Let me grab a grab a Dodger. We'll go with this uh, sling blade here. You know. Setback behind the dodger to your lure is another aspect of dodger fishing. So let me grab a lure here. This is a pretty good example of, of one type of lure. This is one of my shad tubes. This, you know, you'd, you'd rig a leader through this bait, you'd thread it and have a treble hook here in the skirt, maybe a couple beads in the mix somewhere. Bottom line is, that has no action on its own. You just troll that through the water, it's going to pretty much go in a straight line. It's not going to be doing a whole bunch. You need to pair it with a dodger. Uh, a sling blade 
or you know a mini diamondback something like that to impart some action to the bait rule of thumb you want this two to three dodger links behind the blade and i'll go a little bit further than that Think about a bass fisherman throwing a Zara spook. He's walking the dog with it. And that that type of action triggers strikes. And why it triggers strikes is, is the lure darts forward, it hesitates, and it darts again. Hesitates and darts. Hesitates and darts. What you want to do with your dodger and your soft plastics or your worms or whatever you're pulling that has no action of its own, you want to get that leader link dialed in so you're not getting continuous action and you're not getting occasional action, you want action that, that incorporates just a hair of hesitation. The tube moves and stops a little, moves and stops a little, moves and stops a little. That, over the years, I have found to be the most effective way to trigger strikes, whether you're pulling hoochies or tubes or worms or whatever behind a blade. I like to get that link just right so I get that that dart and just stop for a second and that triggers more strikes than anything else I've found when I'm when I'm using that kind of rig. Now, and, and typically that's two and a half Dodger links. So if I was using a six inch blade, I would start off at 14 inches and uh, I can almost guarantee you, you're gonna have the, the perfect action at that length behind the blade. Now moving on, you might not be pulling a tube or a hoochie or something like that. You might be pulling a lure like this trigger spoon that has plenty of action, man. This spoon has great action. Control it by itself and catch a lot of fish. But sometimes you want to team this with a dodger, but you don't need the dodger to give the lure action. The lure has its own action, so you can make that length longer. When I'm using a spoon or a plug behind a dodger, typically I'm going anywhere from 24 to 40 to 48 inches behind, just kind of depending on you know where I'm at, what the conditions are. Uh, bottom line is, in that situation, I'm just relying on the flash and vibration of the Dodger to pull fish into the area. Then they spot this, this wounded bait fish. They, they spot the trigger spoon working over here on its own, and they grab it. So there you go. Set back behind the Dodger, lures with no action, two to three Dodger links behind, two and a half optimum, and spoons, plugs, stuff that has its own action. 24 to 40 even 48 inches behind the blade that's going to serve you well the dodger's going to pull fish into the region they're going to spot your offering it's going to be fish on diane's going to be smiling i'm going to be smiling high fives all around it's going to be a great day anyway that's all i got to say 100 feet back that whole multiples of 100 thing that mark christophel taught me that that's just a great tip right there um, the setback behind the blade. You got it. I'm rambling a little bit. I want to thank you guys for all the support. Thanks for the question, Diane. I hope this information helps you out on the water. I hope it helps everybody out on the water. Um, if you're looking for great trout gear, you know where to go. Fishhuntshoot.com. That's where you'll find all my gear. And uh, man, 3.1 million views, almost 11,000 subscribers. We couldn't do it without you guys. Thanks a lot. I'm Kel Kellogg. I'm signing off. You have a wonderful day. Stay happy, stay healthy, and get out on the water when you can. I'll catch you later, guys. Think lead core line's obsolete? Well, think again. Look at those big, beautiful rainbows. I got these fish while trolling 15 to 20 feet deep, and I didn't use a downrigger. If you don't want the expense or hassle of using a downrigger, pick up one of my yellow lead core rods in the Fish Hunt Shoot Production store and get ready to yell, fish on. Just like that, baby.